greetings to everyone this morning as we rise to our call to worship. Praise the Lord and grace be grace be to be praised. We come to bless and praise his holy and righteous name. Praise is our God and grace be grace to be praised. How we give him thanks and how we give him praise all because of who he is. We can bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, how we give you thanks and we are simple in your name on this day that you have made this beautiful day that we indeed, O oh God, will rejoice and be glad. We give you thanks because of who you are. We are simple in your name, O oh Lord God. We lift you up. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We sing a new song yeah. unto you for yeah. you alone are worthy of all of our praise, glory, and honor. And so, Lord God, we need your manifest presence in this place. We long for you. We hunger for you. We thirst for you, O oh Lord God. And so, Lord God, satisfy our thirst, satisfy our hunger that will cause us to want more and more of you. Great is our God. And greatly, greatly to be praised. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is, and is to come. Worthy is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. So we thank you, O oh Lord God, for this day, for this time. It's in your precious name we do pray with thanksgiving. Give you glory and honor in your precious name. Our worshipers are entering and we are remain, remaining on our feet. We will turn to Genesis, the 17th chapter, and I will be reading verses 1 through 7. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram. And said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For I, for a father of many nations, have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Verse 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in, in their generations for everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. God's word is blessed. As our worshipers are entering, I'd like to say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. of being a father. Being a father where you adopted a child, biological child, or spiritual children, may God continue to bless you. Close our eyes for our time of prayer. Lord, we are so grateful and thankful for this another day, another opportunity to bless and praise your holy and your righteous name, all because of who you are. You're a great God, faithful God. When we are faithless, you remain faithful, O oh Lord God. And so, Lord, we lift up our cares and our concerns unto you on this day. Dear Lord, so many people are struggling in so many areas. There are those that are on our sick and shut in list. We pray for them. We pray for those that are recuperating and recovering 
from surgery. Uh, oh, Lord, we pray for those that are living with conditions. We pray for those that are in facilities, for them that are at home. Dear Lord God, we pray for those that are in prison. Lord, we ask for your mercy and for your grace. We ask, oh, Lord God, that you would send those across your path. Dear Lord, to remind them of your love, remind them of your faithfulness, Remind them how you never leave nor forsake. Remind them that you are their shelter, you are their hiding place. You are their healer and healing. And healing is not just in our physical body. Healing in so many areas. So heal, O oh Lord God, as you meet their need according to your riches and glory. Lord God, we lift up those that minister in the prison. We ask that you continue to strengthen them, to shield and protect. Oh, Lord God, as they share the word of God, may they never be caught off guard, dear Lord God. Thank you for shielding and protecting. Thank you for the staff. Dear Lord God, we pray for the inmates that as they hear your word, they will receive your word and walk in the newness of life. Oh, Lord God, that they will make a difference in the prison, living for you, being for you, doing for you, and making a difference, oh Lord. And so we ask for your continued grace and your mercy. We pray for caregivers, those that are caring for those that need help, that are sick, dear Lord God, that can no longer care for themselves. We pray, oh Lord God, for their patience. We pray for their care. We pray for their compassion. We pray for their faithfulness, oh Lord God. We pray, dear Lord God, for the tenderness as they will care for those who are not able to care for themselves. We pray for the medical uh, profession, oh Lord God, nurses and doctors, to have an understanding and the knowledge as they would care for those, as they would treat those, as they would operate on those, oh Lord, as they would give instruction. So we pray for the doctors and the nurses and all those that are in the medical field, oh Lord God. We pray for the men and women that will stand and preach and teach your word on this day. We pray, dear Lord God, that indeed the atmosphere is set, oh Lord God. The heart is tender and supple. The ear is wide open to hear and to receive and to be not only hearers but doers of your word. Yes. Good soil, oh Lord God, that your word will fall into to make a transformative difference for your glory and for your honor, that we indeed would be a powerful witness for a powerful God that we are now serving. So we give you thanks and we give you praise. We pray for our children. Oh Lord God, we pray that you would continue, oh Lord, to have your hand of grace and mercy Upon them, we pray for the adults that are teaching. Dear Lord, we pray that they would teach them to pray, how to pray for themselves, their families, their friends, their school, dear Lord, that they would walk in the newness of life, dear Lord God. I pray for our children. Have mercy. Our children who will carry your name to the next generation. Our children. Dear Lord God, would be an example even now, today, this very second, as they would serve the true and living God. And so we're grateful for this time of prayer. We're grateful for the choir. Dear Lord, we're grateful for the congregants. We're grateful for those that are online, oh Lord God, those that are in our presence. We're grateful for the ministerium, dear Lord God. We're grateful for the word that we are gonna hear. We're grateful that we're at the end of our seat, anticipating and longing to hear your word, O oh Lord God. We're grateful that we're able to celebrate this Father's Day, O oh Lord God. We pray you would comfort those who uh, no longer have the presence of their fathers, but as they continue to reach out to others, comfort and strengthen 
Remind them that they are loved. Remind them that they are your treasure, your peculiar people. Remind them that you are ordering their steps in your word. Remind them that you never leave nor forsake. Remind them that you are causing their cups to overflow in the matchless name of Jesus. Remind them, O oh Lord God, that as they reach in to reach up and to reach out to others, to share the love of Christ in the matchless name of Jesus. Thank you for our fathers, O oh Lord God. Thank you for a great and mighty work that you are continuing to do. We ask for your grace, we ask for your mercy, Oh, Lord God, so many things to be listed and lifted up to you. You know it all, and we give it all to you. We thank you for moving and working as you continue to show yourself mighty, continue to show yourself faithful, as you continue to show yourself strong and awesome that there is no God like unto thee in all the earth. There's none that compares unto thee. There's none that causes us to stand in awe. There's none that causes us to lose our breath as we look at the beauty of the sky, as we look at the leaves as they go back and forth, as we see the wind, as we hear the wind, as we stand in your presence, that causes us to say hallelujah to the King of Kings, hallelujah to our Savior, hallelujah to the Master, hallelujah, hallelujah, we lift up. Thank you for your sweetness. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your correction. Thank you for wooing and beckoning us. Thank you, Lord God, when we think about the goodness of God and all that you continue to do as you beckon us to come unto you. We want to learn of you, oh Lord God, because you're meek and lowly in heart. So we come. We come to the source of our strength. Yeah. We come to the source of our life. We come because we live, move, and have our being in you. We As our worshipers are entering and as we prepare um, for our announcements, and our greetings, if we have any visitors here with us this morning, if you would please stand to share your name and any information. Well, welcome to everyone this morning on live stream as well as um, in the congregation. Do we have any birthdays or significant days? <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that a birth? It's challenging for me to turn. It's a birthday. It's a birthday. birthday. Well, happy birthday. May you experience many more as we would sing happy birthday. May God bless you. experience many more. As we continue with our announcements, please look in the middle section for um, the weekly events. Um, please be reminded tomorrow at six, 6 to 8, tomorrow evening will be Grief Share Ministry. We also have choir rehearsal on Tuesday, um, the youth as well as youth dance. Prayer um, online for corporate prayer with the number listed and the access code. On Wednesday is prayer meeting as well as Bible study. And it's accessible on Zoom with the number and the pass code. On Thursday at noon is um, senior Bible study. 
um, at, from 11 until noon. If we would look at the top of our um, bulletin, the Men's Celebration Sunday, June 23rd at 3 p.m., Shiloh is invited to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 920 Liberty Street, Bishop Frank, Frankie Quinn. Vacation Bible School, the theme, God's Truth Never Ends, Romans 12.2. The date, June 24th through 28th. The time, 5.30 to 8.30, kindergartners through 12th and adult. Uh, registration, Sunday, June 16th and 23rd in the church um, vestibule. Classes, crafts, games, food, and extra fun day. See you there, Deaconess Brenda um, McWilliams. On the back, Shiloh's Community uh, Outing Fellowship will be July 27th, um, 1 to 5 p.m. at um, Waldemere Park. The cost is $33, and the combo pass includes, and you can read the rest of the uh, information. And as Pastor is coming, I would like to thank our Shiloh family for being such a support for um, my son, our son, uh, Daryl Cook and I, as you helped us celebrate his installation on last Sunday. Thank you so much, and it just means the world to the Cook family. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise today. Amen. 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 What a wonderful time we had on last uh, week at Second Baptist at the installation of Pastor Daryl Cook uh, Jr. And so we are grateful unto the Lord and uh, for what he has done and is doing. And we thank God for uh, Shiloh that made its presence known. Amen. Uh, there are just a few announcements I want to share. Reverend Cook did share. One of them is with uh, Christian Ministries. Uh, of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, they will be having a men's program. It's in your bulletin here on next week. Uh, they have come to us several times and not only in afternoon worship, uh, but last year they joined us uh, with their, son, their vacation Bible school as they will again this year. And so he asked if we would come and how could I tell them no, amen. And so I want us, uh, we don't do a lot of any more afternoon programs because it just, uh, just trying to get support for it. And I'm not just talking about Shiloh. It, it doesn't seem uh, to be going well um, from many sources that I um, communicate with. And so that's fine, you know, things change. And so, uh, but we do want to make sure that we go and support, particularly the men uh, on next week at uh, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Amen. 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 Y'all didn't say amen. I can hear very well. I can hear very well. Amen. And so in addition to that, we thank God for this. Happy Father's Day to everybody. That's a father, Godfather, uncle, uh, encourager. Amen. We give God praise for you on today. Amen. Uh, that's right. Come on. Amen. Listen, I, I, I understand and I believe that God is doing some restoration uh, in areas of all of our lives, in all of our lives, and even in God's creation, uh, both male and female, God is just doing a wonderful work, and we got to let God do what he does, and at the same time, we have to participate in what God is doing, and I think this is a wonderful time as we're celebrating Father's Day uh, for us to improve our status uh, as a father, not only unto our children, God's children, uh, nephews and all of those that we influence, but uh, unto the presence of God. And the wonderful way of doing that, a wonderful way of doing that is really to see what thus saith the Lord. And let me say this, uh, as men, we have, uh, we have challenges like anybody else. And so we thank God today that in our men's ministry, MRG, men's relationship with God, uh, there's a new book that we're studying called Man Up, Man Up. And I want to invite you 
uh, to this study every man that has not been coming. Uh, it's once a month, generally from about 10 to noon. Uh, we spend a good time really dealing with issues that come up at the table and stay at the table. Amen. And we are grateful when we see the increase of how men are just uh, becoming greater men of God. Amen. Now listen, it didn't, it's not just only open for men over 21, young men uh, that are growing into manhood. We want to invite them to come as well because it is a very important time where the men of the church are coming together and then beginning to walk even more so in their calling. Amen. Now listen, everybody has something to do. First of all, let's thank God that he gives you the time and energy. Secondly, let me say that you ought to take some time out to be a part of this ministry once a month. Amen? Once a month. And so I want every man, if you haven't been a part of, see Deacon White before you leave today. Now, don't take too long because it's Father's Day. We want him to celebrate like everybody else. But see him. If you don't have the book, let him know. Uh, and, and if you do have the book, come on, let him know that you'll be there. But we want to see you on our next second Sunday in July uh, at 10 a.m. right here at Shiloh. Amen? Amen. Come on, we give God praise again. <laughs> Family is very important, so we want to continue to lift those up. I don't have any other announcements I want to uh, lift up to you other than what happened at Waldemere as well as uh, what's going on in our vacation Bible school. Now, I understand on the other week, Sister McWilliams, you were trying to get volunteers together. Is that right? Uh, how successful was that? Good, good. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. And so let's keep in mind Vacation Bible School is coming up the 24th of June. The 24th of June. Amen. Amen. All right. Come on, let's give God praise for this opportunity. Amen. To be in worship. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all real quiet today. Real quiet today. Amen. Amen. But we're going to give God the praise that he deserves. So I'm going to ask if you will grab your hymnal. Let's turn to 285. 285. That's our congregational hymn for this morning. It is a familiar hymn to all of us. As a matter of fact, many of you may not even uh, need the hymnal because you know it so well. Amen. But And some of us live by it every day, maybe even sing it, to remind ourselves how much we trust in the Lord. And so for 285, I will... Trust in the Lord. Amen. Would you help us? Would you help us? Come on. Oh, I'm going to fight on and I'm going to watch, fight and pray. I'm going to fight and Mm, 
I'm going to treat every till I come on, come on. I'm going to treat every yes, I'm going to treat every oh, I'm going to treat every until oh, I come on I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stay on my bending knees until I Yet I'm going to stay on my bending knees. I'm going to stay on my bending knees. I'm going to stay on my bending until I. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together as we give God glory amen amen we thank god for this opportunity to give him praise and worship anybody was glad that you woke up this morning how many glad that god allowed you to walk in here to dress yourself to come to give him praise how many are just glad to be alive today come on give god some praise amen I'm telling you, it is a blessing. It is a blessing. We hear of tragedy everywhere. We hear of tragedy everywhere. But we thank God today that he still allows his grace to rest upon us. And I'm telling you, we are a blessed people. We are a blessed people that deserve to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. So I want to just uh, say that now is our time for tithe and offering. Tithe and offering. Amen. Oh, no, no, y'all didn't get that. It's time for tithe and offering. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, it's rough when you don't have nothing. Thank God when they give you something. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to be able to give. God asked for us a tenth of all of our increase, and so we want to come today and give unto God what he asks. As our ushers are coming, as our ushers are coming, amen and new uniform amen y'all look beautiful amen 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 we are grateful unto the lord for what he does amen would you all join us in prayer well father we are grateful we're grateful unto you uh, for so much that you give us and so much that you do who you are in our lives and so lord we come to this hour of the tithe the mission for the church is so great and Lord, as we know, each church has this uh, individual calling to fulfill parts of that mission. We pray, God, that we will answer the call through our tithe and our offering, that we may be good stewards unto you. And God, that you will give us increase, that we may participate on a greater level. Now, Lord, as we continue to pray, bless all that we do. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask if you would stand. Our ushers are in place. Uh, that we would come around and uh, bless uh, the tithe box and let's come around with a cheerful smile unto the Lord. Amen. Brother Lemon.
Amen. Amen. Sing with me how great is our God. All the scene how great, how great is our God. Amen. Father, we bless your name for who you are. Thank you for 109 years of the Shiloh Baptist Church. Thank you that we have known who our creator, sustainer, and our head of the church is. Now, Lord, may this knowledge be common to all of us as we give as cheerful givers unto you. We thank you in advance of what you're going to do. It is in Christ's name we pray, amen. Yeah. On next week, as, as the choir is getting ready, but on next week, uh, we're gonna have in the bullets, and I want you all to keep very uh, uh, keen aware of it. Uh, anytime, anytime someone has been called to a church, especially a young pastor who's trying to uh, make it, I think the community should support them, should support them. Uh, it was wonderful uh, on last week with Pastor Cook's uh, installation. However, I think more in the community could have supported it. Amen. This is a monumental thing when God entrusts his people into the hand of his servant. And so on the 30th of this month, the 30th of this one, uh, Reverend Marcus Yule, who's the new pastor of the pastor-elect, that is, of the Community Missionary Baptist Church, will be installed. Uh, and so we want to make sure uh, that if you're available, please, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's go uh, and support him. Let's show him and uh, the great church community some love uh, in their endeavor uh, with their new pastor as they continue the work that God has called. Amen. We are one community and we need each other. Amen. 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 I need you. You need me. We all a part of what? That's right. That's right. Come on, give God some praise for being a part of his family. Amen. Truly, we are grateful unto the Lord for what he's done. Amen. How many are grateful for what God is doing? Amen. How many of y'all still are grateful for what he's done already in your life? I'm, I'm not talking about opening doors. I'm talking about there are some doors that we're grateful God closed. Amen. Amen. There are some of us that are grateful that God healed us when it looked like it wasn't any good. There are some of us that are grateful that God picked us up when we were down. Some of us are grateful when God delivered our children. Some of us are grateful when he worked it out on our job. Are there any grateful people in the house today? Are you really grateful? Come on, give God some praise if you really are grateful. You're facing some challenges right now. And you are trusting that God is going to deliver you. You're grateful unto the Lord God. Come on, praise his name. Amen. For the issues that God has allowed in my life, I'm just grateful. Amen. Grateful today. Grateful to be here on this wonderful Father's Day. Amen. I was uh, decided to do something new and people were just looking at me like I lost my mind. I seen men that were running along the way and they were driving. And as I passed them, I, I rolled my window down. Happy Father's Day. One guy looked at me, didn't know what was going on. Uh, but you know, there are some people that we just need to let the light of Jesus. I, I've decided... I don't care how evil and ugly people are, I'm not going to let them change me from who God has made me out to be. I mean, when you really think about it, God has done a lot with you. God has brought you a long way. And don't let somebody take you back the other way. Is there anybody decided today you're not going to go back the other direction? Come on, give God some praise if you're made up in your mind. No matter how they treat you, you're going to be good unto the Lord. Amen. We are blessed to be here. So good to see so many good-looking fathers. You mean the women didn't say amen? Say amen, Brother Marcus. Brother, say, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Me and you, I know you're holding it down. We, the whole front pew, we got it. 
Amen. They said we're good looking. Amen. It's good to see so many good looking fathers. What the problem is. Amen. It's good to see them. Amen. 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 On Mother's Day, if mothers sneeze, they close down and run to the Kleenex factory and get all the Kleenex. Did you sneeze? Yes. I said, there's some good looking fathers here. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. I want to uh, there's one other verse. There's one other verse. Verse number eight. There's one other verse. There's one other verse. And that, that, you ain't got to stand. Let me just read this verse. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger and the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. I will give unto thee to thy seed after thee in the land where thou art a stranger and the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Amen. Thus ends the reading. I'm going to talk from the subject this morning, a father's influence on the world. A father's influence on the world. I, I'm, I'm vacillating between uh, I, I really want to teach this. I don't know how, about preaching it, but I just really want to teach it because I think there are some good points inside of here that really we need not to miss uh, because it is just such a, to me, filled with richness. Um, as normal, uh, as normal and usual, there are components to uh, what a sermon is made up of. You all know that. And so I want to talk about the theme, flawed to perfection. Flawed to perfection. I'm going to get into that. We're going to talk about that a little bit as we are going. I'm uh, as we go on. So uh, let us pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we thank you for your blessings. How you have taken even flawed individuals and gotten uh, and used them in a mighty way. And so, Lord, as we uh, come today, inspire men, inspire men, inspire women that we, God, may celebrate the men that are in our lives and encourage them as they are coming forth and going forth, knowing that God has a plan for them. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. A father's influence on the world, and the theme is flawed to perfection, flawed to perfection. If the world would have its way, wow, we would uh, hear some very uh, contrary things to what not only what we would have to say, but what thus the Lord is saying. And I'm glad, and I hope you agree with me, that I do not fit in the opinion of, the opinion of the world is not the opinion of God. Because if it was, then a lot of us would be sitting here without any hope at all. And so I'm grateful that we are uh, in Jesus Christ, and God has a greater uh, significance for our lives than uh, what we have seen. And so I'm always amazed at how uh, God takes our flaws and turns uh, our flaws into uh, the service for himself and for others. And it wasn't until I began to really um, meditate and study on this particular text, it really made a lot of more sense because we are actually catching Abraham or Abram after uh, the post uh, uh, father of he's he's now already a father of a son but he is not uh, the father of the chosen son and so here we we are finding abraham at the age of 99 99 it was at 86 that he had uh, uh ishmael and then uh, he goes forth and y'all know how it is sometimes how we try to help god uh, and do what god uh, we think what god wants and and trust me, let me say this, that God knows what he wants. Tell somebody God knows what he wants. And beloved, and beloved, when God knows what he wants, the, the, the trouble that we have is waiting on God. Am I talking to anybody that struggles sometimes with waiting on God? Amen. I struggle every now and then. I struggle with waiting on God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I have this earthly voice 
uh, that is quite feminine, that, that's been with me almost 26 years, and keeps telling me, you just need to slow down and wait on God. That's what she says to me, and I tell her, I don't want to talk to you right now, because you're right. Uh, but the reality is, we do need to wait on the Lord. And so, uh, because of his lack of waiting on God, Abraham comes to the point, and he sleeps with Hagar. Hagar has a, a son, call him Ishmael, but Hagar, uh, son, and Ishmael is not the promise. It's not the promise. And so 13 years go by, 13 years go by. And God, a Abraham recognizes, listen, I had this son. This is not what God wanted. The promise is not coming through him. And let me tell you, you can't hurry God. No matter what you do, you cannot hurry God. You got to wait on him. Tell somebody you got to wait on him. And so he waits, he waits 13 years. God is not really in a deep conversation with Abraham, but the time comes in chapter 17, starting in verse number one. He has this conversation with Abraham. Abraham, listen, the time is now, time is now. And listen, you have to also remember that we're at the point where Abraham, listen, he is already, when he had Ishmael, it was not only humorous, but at 99, it's got to be laughable that he can have another child. At 99 years old, Abraham uh, fulfills the promise of God and he brings forth the son that is promised. But I want to share with you that even in this, God takes Abraham through that span of time between 86 and 99. And what he does, he purifies Abraham. And now Abraham is now ready to serve God. That God requires for us to be purified, to go through some ups and downs, to get us ready, to get rid of some stuff. Tell somebody what looks good to you may not look good to God. And there are some things that God will get rid of. He will extract out of you. But whatever God extract, he put something in better than what he took out. And I'm suggesting today that Abraham really got to the point where the Lord said, now you're ready. Now listen, I may have got tired after year five and six. But now Abraham is ready because God says he's ready. He's now prepared. He's gotten his heart together, his mind together. And listen, when you're doing a great work for the Lord, you got to learn how to be obedient. Got to learn how to wait on God. You got to learn how to not let your will be his will. You got to get rid of self and you got to let the will of God flow up through you. And when that will becomes the permanent and predominant will, you're now ready to serve God in the capacity in which he desires. So Abraham is ready now. And he's going to be the fulfiller of the promise of God that through him, he will be the father of many nations. There's a story that was told by CBS that was aired several years ago. Uh, and it was a special called the Honor Palmer, Honor Palmer, the man and the legend, the man and his legend. And so the first question to Mr. Honor Palmer uh, went something like this, and this, this is how it went. It said, Mr. Palmer, uh, you are a man whose influence and leadership have been felt around the world, and if there's one thing that has contributed to the making of Autumn Palmer and, and to the respect that you command everywhere, what would that be? He was asked this question, and listened to his response. Says, Without any hesitation, Arnold Palmer said this. He said, the influence of my father. He said, I was influenced by my daddy. It was my daddy who influenced me. It was my daddy who got me to where I am. And, and God wants us to understand that fathers have influence on the entire world, on the nation. And so those people that are influencing us, and we're going to get into that a little bit later, are, are usually people in our life that are father and mother figures. In this aspect, it was a father figure. And so if you're a father or if you hope to be a father one day, then I want you to understand the tremendous influence that a father has upon his family and thus upon the world. Father is some of the first disciplines that you get. My mother would hit me. My father would speak to me. I'd rather for my mother to hit me the way my father spoke to me. 
Because my father demanded respect. He demanded you listen to him. And it was not that he was trying to be your dictator. He said, son, you're too young to go astray because you got a whole lot of life ahead of you. And so here inside of this, as fathers are important to God because they are created in God's image. And let me say the first father that there ever was, was God himself. He's the father of this universe. He's the father that we still call on right now. And so God was the first father. And so uh, we are created in God's image. In other words, we are made like our father. We are made like the image of God. And he was the first father. He uh, has laid out before us uh, in this world uh, a model to follow. Fathers provide the love and nurturing attention that is often so needed and development of the next generation in which leadership of the world will come through. Fathers will help shape and mold who you are. Contrary to the world's popular beliefs on fathers, God conveys through Abraham the will of his father. In other words, God is using Abraham's earthly body to convey God's heavenly existence and will. And the God of all creations, how fathers impact and influence the world that we know. God is using Abraham to show forth the God that is in him. And so I want to point out a few things how Abraham accomplished, accomplished this very task. Fathers influence in the lives of their children by shaping and molding their lives with knowledge, love, and support. A father's role is to be vigilant, thus ensuring strong development of their children. Fathers are oftentimes misunderstood. Somebody say misunderstood. They are oftentimes looked at being mean and strict. Uh, unbending and unwilling, but I want you to understand, fathers see some things that children don't. And we ought to give God praise for our fathers now or father figures in our life that stopped us from going down paths that may have been our demise. Let me let remind you that as dads, we must not give Satan a foothold in our families. <clears throat> Fathers stand at the door and fathers that know who the Lord is and knows how to pray and know the word of God understand that Satan is not welcome in their house because it is there that the father is stood is there to protect the family. The father is there to catch the family from going all various directions. I heard Pastor Cook said it on last week. I've said it many times. Many of you have had this experience and even there are some of you that are here today that have had your children come to you ask if you could spend the night over so and so house and before they can get the name out the answer came back no and the reason it came back no is because they knew some stuff you didn't know and you thought you were going over there to have a good time can I tell you a good time can be a lifetime of a bad time somebody ought to give God some praise Being a father is not always liked, not always agreed with, but if you hang in there long enough, you will learn some things. I, I was the other day, I was driving uh, and, and something hit me. I don't know why it came and there. I don't know where stuff comes to me, helps me to understand. I said, now, man, I understand my daddy a little bit more. Father said, son, you may not understand this now, but if you keep living, if you keep if you keep living you you'll understand me later and and by and by i'm to the point now that that when something and i remember very well those things and lessons my father taught me I, i'll go to him now i said daddy listen i remember when you said this and you were right he said yes son i tried to tell you you didn't want to hear that i wasn't trying to hurt you but yeah i was right I was right. And that's not arrogance. It's trying to keep you on a safe path. It's trying to keep you out of trouble. It's trying to keep you from people that will hurt and harm you. It's trying to keep you in the path that God wants you to go. See, listen, as young kids, we don't see what God has for us at age five, six, and seven. 
But God gives us people, fathers and father figures, to help keep us on track so we can get to our destination. Is there anybody here glad that you had a dad in your life, a father figure? that helped you get to where you needed to go. Maybe it was an uncle or a grandfather or maybe somebody in your neighborhood, but everybody had somebody that helped them to get to where they are. We gotta give them back because the truth of the matter is God has given us them. I understand that there have been faults and failures along the way, but that does not dismiss what God has put in plan. And so contrary to the world's popular belief on fathers, God conveys through Abraham, the will of the first father and God of all creation, how fathers impact and influence the world that we know. Fathers influence the lives of their children and does that by shaping and molding. A father's role is to be vigilant, thus ensuring strong development of their children. Let me remind you that a dad, we must not give to the foothold of the enemy. That's why fathers must be watchful we must always be on guard. Amen. If we see somebody uh, that's going along, I told my, my oldest daughter, she said, Dad, I'm going to go out on this date. I'm going to prom. I said, okay. I said, uh, tell the guy you're going with, uh, I, I would like to meet him, but if I don't, I have a bullet in my pocket. I wasn't joking. I wasn't joking at all. I, and uh, Dad, you just sold this, that, that. No, listen, you say whatever you want to say. Listen, I know about being a boy. I know about being a man. And listen, you a nice young lady, and we're going to make sure you stay in that direction. And, and we have to be sure, and even with young men, even young cousins and relatives, and even my young nephews now, we have to make sure that we are encouraging them according to the will of God. So a father's role is to be vigilant, and not only vigilant by watching, vigilant in prayer. Vigilant that we pray with our children, pray with our nieces, pray with our nephews, pray with our godchildren. Let them know that God has a plan for them. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29 being it is verse number 11 says God says I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you to grow you to make you great God has a plan for our life the worst thing that a young child can miss out on is understanding at an early age God's got success waiting for you we must always be on the guard the reason is because we have an adversary the devil First Peter chapter five, verse 18 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for something or someone to devour. Satan is after our immature young people. Satan is after them and to the extent if he can't get them in school, he'll get them on the street. If he can't get them on the street, he'll get them in the mall if you can't get them in the mall or anywhere else he'll get them he'll try to go after them in their dreams i'm telling you satan desires to take your family and to rip it apart is there anybody here that can tell satan today my family ain't yours to mess with and the reason is because he knows that the family goes so goes the nation the reason we have so many issues in our land today is not because of high taxes, not because of political status or who's in office, who's not in office. It's because Satan has come after the family and has attacked the family to the extent that we are now suffering because he is now coming between us and the family. So let me point out a few points today, beloved, that showing how God influences the world through our fathers. First, let me share with you, Abraham taught uh, us that fathers receive grace and to teach grace as you receive grace. Abraham walked with God faithfully. However, Abraham exemplified how we should never get ahead of God nor think we understand God's mind. Waiting, waiting, faith rewards and strengthen was rewarded by Abraham at the age of 99. Abraham waited on God. Tell somebody you got to wait for the Lord. <clears throat> 
you, you, it, it may take longer. You, you may have been, been hanging in there. You might be even tired of waiting. You may be frustrated in your waiting. But tell somebody you still got to wait on God. <clears throat> God's got your blessing in his hand. God is ready for you, but you got to be ready for God. God may make you wait one year, may make you wait two years, but however long it is, you got to still trust that what God said is going to happen. It's going to happen. Whatever God said is going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. You can't give up on God. You can't get ahead of God. And that was Abraham's problem. Abraham saw that he was waiting on God. Maybe got a little ahead of God. And then at 86, he got with his handmaiden, gave his handmaiden a baby, called his name Ishmael. And yet that was not what God wanted. God said, listen, I saw what you did. I saw you didn't wait on me. But it still is not what I want. I want you to understand today, just because you decide to move, it don't move God at all. And so God took Abraham at 99 years old and brought forth a son as he had promised. I don't care how long you wait on God, Abraham showed us, don't get ahead of God, but still wait on God. Is there anybody waiting on God right now? I mean, don't get frustrated when you're waiting. Even while you're waiting, you need to give God praise. Lord, thank you that I'm waiting. Thank you that you give me strength. Thank you that you give me foresight to keep waiting on you. It's imperative that we learn how to wait and be patient with God. Is there anybody that trusts God today? Is there anybody that believes that God will come? Won't God do it? It doesn't matter how long it is, but there are some of us here today that as long as I wait, God will come. And there's some of us that can say, Pastor, I waited on God and it sure was worth it. Is it worth it to anybody when God showed up? Didn't he bless you? Didn't he do what he said he was going to do didn't he make you shout didn't he make you say lord thank you for thinking of me give god some praise if he showed up in your time of waiting there there beloved there beloved they they faltered here they faltered here 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 abraham he faltered he he messed up there is it is true that loving grace of a good father will forgive you even when we make a mistake. Abraham and God's relationship showed us some profound things. And a good father will show you that even when you mess up, I still love you anyway. A good father will love you regardless what you do. May not like what you did, may not like how you did it, but they still will love you and forgive you. Now listen, a good father still gonna have a piece of something to say. Yeah, they will. They will. They're not trying to tell you I told you so. But they are hurt that you had to learn the lesson the hard way. Watch this. Especially when they learn the lesson themselves. They're trying to get you to avoid what they went through. Good fathers don't want you to go down paths that were not successful for them. Good fathers don't want you to be hard-headed, stiff-necked. Good fathers want you to open yourself up and trust them although you can't see it. That's what they want. That's what he want. God shows us we even seen that even with the prodigal son. We saw that as the prodigal son left home, took what he had. Father didn't want him to go, but he let him go. My daddy used to always tell me, he said, son, I can show you better than I can tell you. There is something to be said. There's a school that I've went to a lot. And my photo is on the wall. And I haven't been back to that school in a long time. Don't plan on going to even visit. It's called the School of Hard Knocks. When you don't listen, you get enrolled into the school. I hear some chuckles. Somebody y'all been there? Some. Don't raise your hand. I don't want to see it. Eh? Every now and then we'll get invited to the school. You see, Abraham taught us without grace, we are lost. We don't have nothing. And we are glad today that God loves us. It's grace. Grace woke you up this morning. Grace brought you to church today. Grace feeds you every day. Grace give you a good heartbeat. 
Grace gives you good eyesight. Anybody glad that you got some grace today? Can somebody admit the grace that you got? You don't deserve it, but God is good. He's a good father anyway. Can you give God praise for the grace that you're enjoying that you don't deserve? Come on, put your hands together. If God is worthy to be praised over the grace that he has given you. Grace is a good thing. Grace, grace is God unearned favor that he poured out when, where, and on whom he pleased to be generous. And I want to share something else with grace. It is God's prerogative to give you grace. You may not agree with the grace that God has given you, but it's God's choice to give it to whom, to where, and when he wanted to give it. Aren't you glad somebody wasn't in control of the grace God wanted to give you? Abraham showed grace. Abraham was shown grace. God could have been stiff on Abraham. He could have told Abraham, listen, son, I don't want to mess with you. He could have said, Abraham, you're hard. Hit. Abraham, you want to get ahead of me? No, God gave him grace. And with his flawed self, God decides to use Abraham to be the father of many nations. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful who you criticize. Because the very ones that we criticize, that we say are no good, God uses them. And it's got great ministry for them to come forward with. See, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot dismiss those who God have, who has made mistakes. And even if we're honest with ourselves, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have made some mistakes. All of us have said some things we shouldn't have said. Am I talking to anybody in here? Am I talking to somebody who's come out of pocket? Somebody who said some things? Somebody who's done some things? Am I talking to somebody that can admit you ain't got to say nothing to nobody else? But am I talking to somebody in here under the sound of my voice can say, Pastor, I don't deserve to be here, but it's God's grace that woke me up and brought me here. If I would tell you my story, I wouldn't deserve to be sitting where I am. So I'm going to put my hands together and say God look beyond my faults he saw my needs I am a product of God's grace is there any glory in the house today that will give God praise because you are a product of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ secondly Abraham taught us how to receive God's promise by faith Abraham taught us how to receive God's promise by faith 25 years 24 25 years went on before the events of this verses that happened in Genesis chapter 17. Abraham had received a similar set of promises from God. He received them by faith. Somebody say by faith. See, there are some things that God wants to do and he's given it to you. And because it's not manifesting itself right away and you got to have faith, you are challenged to have faith when God speaks. Can I share with you, don't ever doubt God when God says he's going to do something with you. Can I tell you that we ought to be people that's embracing the word and the will of God in our life. As a matter of fact, you ought to want God to speak into your life because there are two or three people here that can test today that whatever God says comes to pass. Have I got a witness in the house? That whatever it is, no matter how messed up, no matter how broke, no matter how down it is, whatever God says he's going to do, God's going to do it. Is there a few people in here believe that God is going to do what he said? As a matter of fact, let me not generalize it. Have God said some impossible things to one or two of y'all in here and God came through like he never came through before? I'm telling you, our God deserves some praise. I God deserves some praise. He will come through like he said he would. Our job is to have faith in God. Ask somebody, do you got faith? Ask somebody, do you got Ask them, amen. Look at the little babies. See the little babies. Ask them, amen. Sister Denise, speak into your baby life, amen. Where your faith at? Oh, he don't understand. No, the Lord has a way. God can communicate with his creation no matter how young or old they are. 
Abraham. Abraham uh, had received a certain set of promises from God. He, and, and let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, a promise is a foreknowledge of something that will happen. A promise is the foreknowledge of something that will happen. God makes an agreement. He makes a promise with you. And because God can't lie, that promise must come to pass. It has to manifest itself because God said it. Now, before you start doubting what God can do in your life, you have to realize that what God says about you has to come to pass because God said it and he can't lie. Look at yourself and say, God didn't lie about me. You may not believe me, but God didn't lie about me. Some of us fail to give God the celebration on the praise because we're vacillating between what God has said and we don't quite grasp the promises of God. And so he received them by faith. In other words, he accepted what God promised as something that was true and that would happen. Let me say this, he accepted. Part of faith is you've got to accept what faith is saying. You've got to accept the promise that God is giving you. we got to accept what God is saying. Fathers teach us how, or Abraham taught us how to accept God's promise, although it didn't come to pass yet. Can you imagine being 99 years old, 100 years, one year short of his 100th birthday, and here God makes a promise and said, listen, I know you had Ishmael 13 years ago, but he wasn't it. I know you had a boy already, and he was part of the promise, but that wasn't wasn't it and time has gone by I know you hadn't heard from me I know you hadn't seen me show up and I know you may have doubted that I was coming and I know you're 99 years old everybody in the camp is laughing at you because you're almost a hundred years old and here you're saying that the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob is going to allow me to have a child and he says yeah well son I'm going to do it and you need to get yourself ready because whatever God God says is going to happen is going to happen and whatever God says is going to come to pass it's going to come to pass can I tell you today that we ought to change our attitude in the way that we give God glory for what God says he's going to do I'm not going to stand anytime doubting God for what he's done because God has brought me this far and God will lead me on God has has woke me up for 56 years huh, in times of trouble and God continues to bless me every day huh. even on my worst day I give God praise huh. even in the times of challenge I know that God is real huh. is there anybody here that can give God praise huh, that he overcomes huh, whatever obstacle in my face huh. I'm glad that I got a promise from the Lord is there anybody else here glad that God promised you some stuff hell trying to come against you God promised it's going to stand money ain't yours God promised it's going to stand bad health come in your life God promised it's going to stand won't he do it won't God do it if you know it's true give God some praise he gave us fathers to remind us uh, that the father of all fathers uh, keeps his promise. Amen. Thirdly, thirdly, Abraham wants us to understand that he taught us how to respond to God's promise by faith. You mean to tell me, Reverend, there's a way we respond to God's promise by faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is a way you and I should respond. Uh, first thing we need to do is believe what God says. How, how, how did Abraham keep up with the part of the covenant? 
That's the question. How did he? He could only do it by staying focused on God's promises. Satan understands that he disrupts the flow of your focus. Your strength will be interrupted. And if your strength is interrupted or your eyes come off of God, then it inhabits or it inhibits the flow that you have in walking in the promises of God. Let me see if I can help you understand this. So, uh, my daddy used to say to me all the time, he said, son, I know you're going to go through uh, difficulties in life. And, and daddy didn't say God. He said, you got to have a goal in front of you. And he says, no matter what that goal is, you got to keep your eye on the goal and don't let nobody distract you from what you're trying to achieve. See, when we are distracted by the enemy, we are allowing the devil to take us out of focus on what God has us focused on in order to achieve the promise that is before us. That's why there are some folk you can't mess with. Because some folk ain't nothing but a distraction. They will get you off of where God is trying to take you. Some folk, you ought not even text because even in their text, they ain't nothing but a distraction. There are some folk you need to unfollow on Facebook. <clears throat> Because there are some people that are always got mess going in their life. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, there are some people that you shouldn't even want to be bothered with. Because if you're not going where I'm going, if you ain't praying like I'm praying, then why am I messing with you? Because you are constantly somebody that's bringing me down. Somebody that's getting on my last nerve. Somebody that's causing me to say words that I should shouldn't be saying is there anybody in the house somebody that's getting us to do stuff we shouldn't be doing am I talking to somebody don't raise your hand but just say amen preacher is there some people that you really need to dismiss uh, I hope today that I'm encouraging you uh, in order to stay focused uh, when you leave church today uh, in your mind you got a checklist uh, that some people are off your list they are out of your life they are out of your Facebook page they are off your email because they are always bringing up trouble can I tell you you need to get around some folk that know how to give God praise some folk that know how to worship his name some folk that know how to speak life instead of death into you I'm telling you Abraham knew what to do he knew how to stay focused on God is there anybody here I might be preaching to myself is there anybody here that know how to keep your eye on God let us stay on the cross you know how to stay on your knees every time you get down you know how to lift a song and give God praise if you're here today come on praise God let the Lord Lord know uh, that Abraham, uh, father of many nations, uh, is still uh, teaching this lesson uh, how to stay on God. Uh, and can I tell you, uh, God will never uh, lead you astray. Uh, God will never uh, lead you into damnation. Uh, God will always uh, lead you into your promise. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that know that God wheel. So good fathers have learned how to influence not only their children but others that are in their influence. Listen, just because it's not your child don't mean you shouldn't tell them what thus said the Lord. We are in an epidemic now, and we don't need the devil to get into you to give us your opinion 
on how some fathers have failed. Because I'm tired of being punished by some that failed when there are some that are doing an awesome job. And we should recognize that. We ought to encourage young men, no matter who they are. I told MRG the other day, I've told all the men, I said, no child should come in this church and you should let them go without stopping and talking to them. There used to be a time where mature men will put in, speak into the lives of these young people, speak into their lives. Let them know that you are a child of Abraham. And those influences, listen, those influences that have helped you Share them with some other. Do you know why young children are starving to death emotionally, psychologically? It's because those who have influence choose not to share it because they feel it's not my child or because they feel that child is too bad. Well, that child may be challenging. And let me tell you this, when people don't feel love, they lash out because they don't know how to love because they haven't felt love. God has left us to influence so many people. Those that influence their children, grandchildren, great grands and nieces and nephews, that's awesome. But I want you to know your job is not done. There are children in your church, children in your neighborhood, children on your job. I want you just to influence them. Amen. God is good. Amen. Brother Powell, I want every now and then, I want you just to bring your badge. Bring your badge every now and then. Influence a child to hate you. Okay, I'm sorry. What's your name, Miss Powell? Okay, Mr. Powell, I'm sorry. Children will stop doing wrong when they know who certain people are. <clears throat> used to be a saying, and I would say this and let you go, used to be a saying when we were younger. Uh, my father would say to us, when we found ourselves behaving in a way that was not part of our rearing, he says, boy, you better act, you better straighten up and act like you are somebody. Some kids can't say that because they've had nobody to pour into their lives. So we give God praise today for fathers. We give God praise for these wonderful men. We give God praise. I was talking to, I call him Mr. Jim, Brother Darby. I was talking to him a year or so ago. And uh, Brother Darby's on this, this mission to help young people know how to invest. And, and by buying a house, maybe getting something young. Uh, while they're young, amen. The worst thing you could ever do is rent, especially for a long period of time. It's the worst thing you could ever do. Buy you something that's yours. Even if you buy you something, five, well, I don't want to stay in that. I don't like that house. That's all right. Buy it for $5. Amen. Y'all think I'm joking. In Buffalo, they were selling houses for $1. Young people were taking those, those that were wise, they were taking those houses, fixing them up, and a few years later, they were selling them $15,000, dollars $35,000. They bought it for a dollar, sold it for thirty-five. dollars They had to put some sweat equity in it, but it was theirs. Built their credit, taught them how to live in life. We have to be able to place and mentor young men and young women. Y'all are wonderful children, wonderful people. We give God praise for y'all today. But fathers keep doing a great job. We love y'all. 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 Amen. Keep doing the work God has called you to do. God bless you. God bless you. Today, beloved, is very happy and joyful for some, but I know on the other hand, it's kind of tough for others. I was sharing with my cousin earlier today who was in Atlanta. She lost her dad uh, not even a year now. And uh, she was with her mother on Mother's Day, and now she has to face Father's Day by herself. I said, baby, take courage that the Lord gave you a good example of somebody to be in your life. Amen. But we thank God for all that he's done. Amen. Now, for those of you 
You know the word prayer? I can't find my father. Because he off somewhere celebrating. And that's good. My daddy need to enjoy himself. My daddy's about to be 84 years old and still can climb on the ladder on the top of the roof of his house. God has blessed him. Anything I can do to make his latter days, his better days, I'm willing to do that because he's been a good father. Amen. But pray for those who have made mistakes and faltered along the way. Because if you understand the text, if you understand Abraham, Abraham was disobedient. And he didn't always please God. But God allowed him to repent and to get right with him. If we're going to be Christians, we got to allow an opportunity for forgiveness and repentance. God will do exactly what he said he would do. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord one more time today. The doors of the church are open. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, as they come, as we open the doors of the church for those who stand to be encouraged, stand to say, Pastor, I need to know who the Lord is. Pastor, I'm struggling with A, B, C, D, E, F problems. I want to tell you that God is so wonderful that he does great things. If you take an opportunity and study all of the individuals that God did great stuff with, they all were broken at some point. They all failed. They all messed up. They all would have made our list to scratch them off. But I'm glad today that God loved them, forgave them, and used them and showed how he can do awesome things. He loved Abraham from flaw to perfection. Abraham got it together. Abraham loved God. If there's somebody today that stands in need of love, stands in need of the soul to be saved, stands in need to come, I want to invite you now. I want to invite you now to come to the Father of all fathers. You may say, Pastor, I'm, I'm struggling in life. That's all right, come. Our Father can be your Father, and He'll love you because you are His own. Come, come, come trust God today. Come trust God today. Come trust God today. Is there one? <clears throat> if there's not one, a deacon's going to ask you to leave the chairs out. I'm going to ask you to come down to the altar for prayer. I ask you to come for prayer today as we come and pray for fathers across this nation. Pray for families that the father would be that uh, place where God needs them to be. I'm going to ask you to come. Amen. Maybe in your life, fathers are well, but I want you to come. If you know somebody that stands in need of prayer, come, come. Let's pray for men. Let's pray for fathers that are doing it well, those that are struggling. Amen. Will you come? Amen. You've been so... And I tell you that nations are defeated on our knees. Hearts are healed when you bow on your knees. And the significance of bowing on your knee suggests that you're not too proud. And that you're saying, Lord, here I am. My pride to the side. I need you to move. I need you to do some mighty things in my life. I don't know how you're coming today, but I just think that you ought to come. Trusting that God is able to do it. Trusting that God is able to open doors. And likewise, doors that are open, God can close. I want to invite you to come. I invite you to come. Bless you. Bless you. Let us pray. Well, Father, we are here again at the altar. We come, first of all, thanking you for...
given us fathers, for you being our father, you showing us how to love, to forgive, to show grace and mercy even when our children go astray. You didn't dismiss Abraham even although he went against your will and tried to bring to pass what your divine will was. You let us know in a gentle, loving way that I wasn't your will, and yet you still forgave him. You still continued to give him promise. You taught us, Lord, how to love each other and how to forgive even when we make mistakes, falter along the way. Thank you so much, God. You're such a good and kind God. Thank you for the lessons that Abraham taught us and how he continues to influence the world. He influenced the world to trust in you. He influenced the world to forgive each other. He influenced the world to let grace, as we receive it, to freely give it to others. There are times in our heart that we want to just hold on to everything. We feel sometimes that certain people deserve it and others don't. Father, we thank you today. Abraham showed us. Don't judge. Just give the grace that he received. He has influenced and continues to teach that lesson today. Several thousand years later, we say thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you've done. Father, we've come today here on Father's Day. We know that the world says one thing, but Lord, we thank you and we praise you for fathers here and abroad that are the just fathers, God, we praise you, Lord, for the work that they're doing, the love that they've given. Father, we thank you, God, for fathers who have loved and cared and maybe are no longer with us anymore, have moved from works to reward, God. But we celebrate you today. We pray for fathers who are struggling with their children. We pray for fathers who are struggling with their grandchildren. We pray today, God, as fathers may stay up and keep their grandchildren and children in prayer on their heart, God. Alleviate them, God, from the worry and let them know they are in good hands and you, God, will take care of them. We're praying for the men of this church. Oh, Holy Father, we're praying that you would strengthen us, that you would help us to be better fathers, that you would help us to be excellent men in Christ, that you would help us to lean on each other, and God, that we can lean on each other. I pray today, God, that we will connect and come together as only you are able to bring us together. Strengthen us according to your will. Let us know, God, that there are purpose that you have still in us God I pray that we will submit ourselves to your way and your will right now and God the eye have yet to see the ear has yet to hear the great things that the Lord has in store for us I pray for men on the corners right now that they will go back and take charge of their family in Jesus name Abraham showed us the only way he could do it is is by allowing you to be first and foremost in his life. I pray today, God, that we will allow you to be the head of our lives, that we will submit ourselves, that we will be obedient to your will, obedient to your way, God. Lead us according to your will and way as only you can, God. I know the devil has played the trick on us and we played into his hands, but I think there's a better day. Every day we are waking up, God, it tells us that you're giving us another opportunity to bow to you and for you to lead us. God, I know you can turn this world around, this land around. I pray for our young children who don't feel loved. I pray for our young children who are in prison. I pray for our young children who are on drugs, God, that you would send a Christian man and woman their way and let them know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Let them know, God, that they are loved and they are not thrown away, God. There's purpose yet to be fulfilled in them. Lord, I praise you right now for what you're going to do, God. I praise you right now. God, we lift you up because you're only the way, you're the truth. 
and the light to turn this dark and evil world around. God, I know you can do it. I know it's in your will. We praise you right now, God, for what you want to do. Your word, God, we praise you for the power in your word. We praise you that demons right now, strongholds are being broken. We praise you right now for deliverance that is happening in Jesus' name. Calm the hearts and the minds of the loved ones, God, in this house in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up fathers who love you so much, who care for you, God. Give them strength to continue on, not only for their children, but to help others and to help fathers along the way. Father, we thank you for what your spirit does. We thank you for when we're weak, you are strong. We thank you for how you can lead and guide us. We pray for Sister Denise, your young grandbaby right now. God, that you would shape and mold in him, God, according to your will. We pray for every young lady and young man and let them know, God, that there is a way to do it and God cares for them. And that there is a godly man, God, that you will send their way to encourage them in Jesus' name. While you're working on parents, while you're working on the structure, God, I pray, God, that you won't leave us nor forsake us. Now, Lord, as we conclude this prayer, we thank you for what you're going to do right now. We praise you by putting our hands together and say we believe it through faith. Just as Abraham taught us and influenced us that the promises of God will come to pass. It is in Jesus' name we pray and the people of God say amen. amen. Come on, give God some praise one more time. Amen. We are getting ready beloved uh, to prepare to dismiss from this place amen amen I pray today that you don't let a man leave and you don't hug him and wish him happy Father's Day amen just because you have no biological children it doesn't mean God hadn't been using you in those ways to encourage to the fathers, we wish you a happy Father's Day. I know this is going to be the second Christmas in the year. There's a whole lot of gifts and stuff waiting at home. There's a whole lot of gifts and stuff waiting at home. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, all right. We got a presentation now, y'all. Amen. Let us stand. No, I'm not going to forget. Oh, oh, I dedicated my song. All right. Amen. Amen. A after Sister Williams come, Miss Daphne has a presentation for fathers, amen, for Mary and Martha, amen. All right, amen. Don't it look good to have the men stand before the church? Amen. And to see them coming. All right. looking at an example, leadership example, that's in our church. So don't think that these men standing here have had it easy, because they haven't. And this song is dedicated to all our hardworking men, whether you be a young father, old father, middle-aged father. Um, I know that you've had some trials and tribulations, sickness in your bodies and all of that, but this is a song that I'm going to dedicate to you. I've had some good days and I've had 
some bad days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low and, and I can't see the road, but I ask the question, Lord, Lord, why so much pain? But now I know he knows what's best for Although my weary eyes cannot see, so I have to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. I won't complain. Because God has been good to me. Oh, he's been good to me. So I have to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I I won't complain. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. All right. All right. All right, D. Happy Father's Day. Okay. Happy Father's Day. 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 Oh, I'm so sorry. Happy Father's Day. Okay. One of our newest deaconess, amen, deaconess Daphne, amen, Johnson, uh, is coming with a wonderful presentation. Come on, let's give God some praise for Sister Daphne. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sister Ophelia, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I'd like to honor or acknowledge our pastor, Pastor Harris, um, pulpit, Joanne, uh, Reverend Joanne Cook, and also our members and friends. I am Deaconess Daphne Johnson, and um, Sister Pat Roberts and I are the coordinators of the women's ministry and we have a special father's day um, presentation um, i would like to invite mary and martha women to please come up and i guess you'll have to come up here with pat and i um, and men you can just listen okay uh, we want to say happy father's day from the pulpit to the pew Fathers tend to get the short end of the stick on this day, so today we celebrate you. Although you may not have children, while some have many or few, we want to honor you today because truly it's all about you. At Shala, we're blessed with men, although there are only about 22. The ones we have are honorable and their motives are true. We are so glad that God chose to place you at Shiloh, for our church wouldn't be the same without you here. 
You preach, teach, deke, sing, usher, and more, all with good cheer. We see you attend church on Sundays, striving to be all that you can be. Yet sometimes we forget to say thanks, as though we do not see. So today we want to say that we see you and are grateful for everything you do. Men of Shiloh, you're one in a million, and we appreciate you. Come on, let's give God a praise again. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Uh, Deaconess Daphne Johnson says she has something for you guys up there, so just be, be patient with us. We give God praise for all of that. I'm, I'm going to share this and say this, and you all can stand right where you are. Don't need for them to go back. We can dismiss like this. Uh, everyone can stand. Uh, the church uh, cannot forget uh, our job is to be thankful, even over the little and the small things. Uh, I think in, in this society, we decide what we're going to be thankful for and who we're going to be thankful to. And God continues to show us that we ought to appreciate each and every person. And so uh, last month, we appreciated all the women uh, doing that. And today, we appreciate the men for being great fathers and men inside of the church and continue to hold up. Uh, and we know that God is going to continue to strengthen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Deacon Woodard, I want to see you at the church to see what kind of candy you got, man. Uh, <laughs> Amen. God bless you. To the women's ministry, Mary and Martha, we love you and we appreciate what you do. Amen. Here at Shiloh. Amen. To all the young men, hang in there. Get to know some of these men and let them tell you the story how they met their wife. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. I'm tell you, a man that finds a wife finds a what? I'm trying to tell you. And you need to talk to some of these women too. Hey, let them know how they, how they allowed themselves to be courted. You ain't gonna just come any old kind of way. Amen. And so. Uh, we want you to be great young people, and God has it, and he has put it here in this church for you to get it. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Our God, our Father, we thank you for such a marvelous day, marvelous participation. We pray, O oh God, that the praise and worship has been acceptable. Thank you for our wonderful choir. Uh, God, has they have sung unto you in our audiovisual ministry, how they have recorded the message and the men that we have preached to and prayed with and spoke to God and the entire church, God, as we have come together. Touch our hearts and our minds. Bless us as we leave this place to continue 
prayerfully in some way, shape, form to, to celebrate men uh, on Father's Day, God. And we pray, God, that there's any broken hearts and mended hearts, Lord, that you would be the master of our hearts, God, and allow our hearts to be in your hand to fix and mend them. Now, grant us grace as we leave this place, never from your presence. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said amen. Amen. God be amen. Come on, shake these young men's hands up here and just celebrate them. Amen. <laughs>